Hey, how's it going? The time is 5.32 p.m. on Monday, July 12th. You are listening to uh, 2021. <laughs> you are listening to Eric on the World. I am your host, Eric, and I am coming at you from Barcelona again. This is part two of my uh, Barcelona series <laughs> that I'm doing here. Um, if you're watching on YouTube and it sounds bad, it's because I am not spending the time to sync my podcast audio with my phone audio. I'm going to try just directly uploading from my iPhone to YouTube, and uh, it's going to mean there won't be so many bells and whistles, but I think just in the name of like efficiency, um, that might be a move to, to go with. Uh, we will we'll see how it turns out. So to all 10 of my YouTube viewers, please uh, keep that in mind. If you do want to follow me on YouTube, you can do that at Eric on the World. Uh, search for that uh, in quotes and put podcast and still scroll some more. The algorithm really doesn't like me and I don't have enough subscribers to get a vanity URL yet. So uh, let's let's get right to it. Let's get let's get the mental health stuff out of the way. Is my mental health great? No. Is it better than the last few episodes? I think so. Is that circumstantial or am I just kind of like deluding myself until uh, the, the, uh, the effect, the shine of traveling wears off? It could be. Who knows? Um, there's a great saying, no matter where you go, no matter where you go, there you are, right? You can't really run from yourself if that is indeed the problem. So TBD, what I was feeling better, I haven't feeling better with the exception of, um, well, let's, so, so I get in, I had had no sleep, uh, and still decided to stay out with the crew here at the hostel, trying to find them. That was a big debacle two nights in a row, trying to, um, get in touch with everybody, you know, not being allowed into the clubs or getting to the clubs and not having a ticket. That's a big thing here is that you have to buy your tickets ahead of time for almost any event, um, because clubs will be sold out or at capacity I, that could be a COVID thing I'm not 100% sure about that um, speaking of which Thursday night was the last night for clubs because uh, the COVID rates here are spiking because of this Delta variant and some I guess um, vaccine hesitancy and in fact uh, two of the people in the hostel tested positive for COVID and uh, there was a cough going around and guess what guess who has that cough <coughs> yeah, it's a dry one. Um, I am vaccinated, and I keep hearing conflicting stuff about whether or not it, you know, how easily it's transmitted to someone who's vaccinated. I would like to get tested, but it's 100 euros. Um, so I'm trying to see if there's some better way to do that. Um, and it uh, could just be party long, right? I don't know. But um, yeah, so, you know, getting into the clubs has been an issue. Um, now I know you have to buy stuff in advance, but again, the clubs are closed down and there's talk of them going into a further potential lockdown. Uh, so I don't know when this fucking pandemic is going to fucking end, but whatever. We have each other here, right, listeners? Um, so, all right, so Thursday night, uh, I have success getting a ticket to the club because it's the last night go out with um, my friend from the hostel who's a doctor who uh, is really good at um, feeling safe about putting things into her body and so when there's someone who's like a little bit crazier than me it gives me some reassurance to uh, you know just go as far as they are but take it back a step or two um, and we did end up at the beach uh, with everybody and eventually um, saw the sunrise and I went, you know, someone was like, let's go skinny dipping. And, you know, I have huge body issues, especially when you're around Europeans in a hostel. Like, the, Spain may be the city with the most beautiful women I've ever seen. And obviously a lot of them are tourists, but maybe just like everyone is flocking to Barcelona because they're, they've been relatively um, lax with like their entry restrictions. But like, holy shit, <laughs> it is insane how hot everyone is uh lots of titties lots of breasts out in the world no complaints here uh however i am the always the fattest and uh, probably like least attractive person in the groups that i'm hanging out in so the idea of taking my clothes off and going into the ocean 
it creates a little bit of apprehension. Uh, but you know what? YOLO, brother. Um, I, I said, no, you got to say yes to life. I don't want to be the guy who's sitting on the fucking the shores because I was too scared to get into the sea. So, yeah, I took the, the clothes came off and I hopped in and had a wonderful, wonderful time uh, with a couple hostel mates. And I got the photo, which is, you know, the really important part is to show the rest of the world how great my life is and that I'm not actually depressed or uh, have horrible eating habits or over drink or any of that stuff, right? It's to be like, look, how else would I end up in the sea hoisting up a beautiful woman onto my shoulders if not for engaging in that kind of uh, uh, hedonistic behavior, you know? You don't get, to, <laughs> you don't wind up with a group of people uh, partially clothed in the ocean at 6 a.m. by not doing those things, you know? Um, now, that's that. So I come home, pass, pass out, and I had booked some comedy shows. And I had a comedy show, uh, my first one this past Friday night, at the Comedy Clubhouse. And I wanted to do some new material, you know? Like, I want to talk about traveling and being in a hostel and so forth. So, uh, as the day progressed, I tried to go for, like, a run to, you know, healthen up my body, if that's a word. Healthify my body. And if I make it like a kilometer half a kilometer and then I can't make it any further and I'm like, so I just had to like walk around and it, you know still like going over my material in my head which I'm not super confident in like I haven't done like the proper work to really write out every beat and uh, and punch it up as they say like to add more 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 funny to it um, and it becomes evident that I'm having like extreme anxiety and I've had these episodes before in my life. Um, the first time I had a, uh, uh, this happen, I was sitting at my computer, and I was like 21 at work, and I felt like, um, I just had a thought about, like, oh, I like, would have had a heart attack, and like didn't get to complete all the creative things I wanted to do in life, and this is at 21. And suddenly I felt like a pain go through my chest, and then my left arm got tingling, and I'm like, oh my God, am I having a heart attack? And so I went to talk to my boss and I said, I know this sounds crazy, but I think I need to go to the hospital because I am having all of these uh, insane symptoms and I'd rather go to the hospital and look kind of silly uh, and realize I'm not having a heart attack than uh, die in this fucking job sitting at the desk while having a heart attack. And she's like, you know, I think you might be having a panic attack, which I really knew nothing about. I thought a, pan a panic attack was like, oh, you're just kind of nervous about things. And it's like, no, it's a very specific like medical occurrence you know and it has this feedback loop aspect um, and when you've never had one before and you don't know what's going on it is the scariest thing ever it's a total out of body experience where you feel like you have no control and you're just on autopilot um, so uh, as it turns out I was having a panic attack um, when I was 21 and I was having a panic attack I could feel it coming on on Friday night I was like no 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 this is the worst possible time I have people from the hostel coming to see me perform I want to make a good show for the, the fellow uh, comedians here. Um, and so I get to the club, I'm feeling tons of nerves, tons of nerves. And then I have like, it just, I literally peaks right before I'm supposed to go on stage. The worst possible time. Obviously being nervous about the comedy show didn't help that situation. Um, but it's like some of the comedians were trying to talk me down like, oh, you'll do fine. You'll do fine. I'm like, no, it's not. There's nothing I could do. I could be on a fucking serene beach right now in a hammock and I would still be having a panic attack. It's, it's a, I just have to write it out. So the guy calls me on stage, the host, um, and I'm like, dude, I'm drawing a blank. Like, I am going... And then this is where, like, riding a bike, the muscle memory of stand-up comedy comes in. It, they were a very generous crowd. Packed house, ready to laugh. Um, but I started doing it and hitting the beats and making people laugh and it was it was great except I'd never performed a lot of this material before and you have to know like you have to go the through line like how it's all going to tie together um I hit a loop on stage I don't even know if that's the right term but we're basically mm, I'm just talking and it's not even material that I have written out I have no idea where it's going I don't have any joke set up for it it's not anything I wanted to say what I was saying in that moment was yeah so it can be really hard traveling around 
from country to country, not totally sure where you're going. And so as I'm saying those things in the back of my mind, I'm like, oh my God, Eric, think of something. Come on, where we connect the tissue. And somehow I was able to bring it together um, and make it get, get to some jokes that had a place to go. <laughs> and it ended up working out all right. It's far from the worst performance I've ever had on stage, but it is 100% the worst feeling I have ever had on stage. My experience on stage was horrendous. It was, and I'm making an ass out of myself, like before, during, and after with the, the bar manager being like, I'm sorry, how much time did I do? I don't know, I just didn't, it was, uh, it was the worst, the worst possible time for any of that stuff to happen. Um, I have been contemplating beyond my own fucked up chemistry, you know, with all the things I'm putting into my body, you know, alcohol being an obvious one that won't help. But then like I started the micro dust dosing mushrooms thing when in the name of like helping my mental health. <laughs> and I don't know if that was or not. And then there's a, there's, there were those hangover pills. So, you know, ostensibly you're supposed to take the mushroom pills every day. Um, and the hangover pills, like whenever you drink, which has been every day. Yeah. <laughs> so, I backed off the last couple days from the hangover pills um, and the mushrooms. Um, but I actually do think because I was feeling these, these feelings way before I started the mushrooms, I'm wondering if these fucking hangover pills are causing it. The brand is called Cure. You can get it in the States on Amazon. It is not available in Germany, I know that much. Um, which might go to say something about what the ingredients are. Uh, but it's that whole DHM thing I said. It truly works as an anti, like, headache, normally anxiety hangover pill but i'm wondering if i just acclimated to that or like i don't know so i'm gonna fuck around with seeing what it's like to not take those pills um and i have been feeling like i said not superb but i've been feeling definitely better like undoubtedly better with the exception of that panic attack so um yeah i think that's everything for the mental health portion of the show but that segment that recurring segment that we're doing um, Spain is awesome. Barcelona is awesome. I learned because my ignorant ass didn't fully understand this that Catalonia considers themselves an autonomous state and wants to have independence from Spain. Um, it's a whole separate language, right? Catalan. I knew that aspect, but I, I didn't know politically speaking that they were trying to uh, break away. But the country of Spain, the government won't let them have a referendum on it. So, um, yeah, they are, uh, that, that's a whole thing. Like they don't, they were cheer, cheering when Spain um, got knocked out of the semifinals for the Euro final. Uh, I know nothing about soccer, AKA football, but um, yeah, I was like, why, why, aren't we in Spain? Why is everyone it's like, oh no, cause they fucking hate the country of Spain. They want their independence. Um, and uh, yeah, so, but the people, the people have been, uh, the people have been nice. The clubbing thing is interesting. Like, I, I was with, we were watching the final, the semifinal, or whatever. And like this, my doctor friend befriended a, like an older guy. He's probably, I think he was like fifty-eight or something. Um, and he wanted to come out clubbing with us. And the, long story short, we didn't get let in because, basically, he and I are too old. <laughs> so that is something that I don't love. Like when these like. A lot of European cities like hold them up to hold themselves out to be so much more progressive than the U.S. But there is like a, definitely a very reinforced gender norm, um, pretty much everywhere I've seen outside of the the U.S. That this is how men are, this is how women are, and you don't fuck with that. Like because women kept being let in the club, younger guys kept getting let in the club, but we were not allowed in the club, and we waited in total about three hours, um, at two different places. So. That's a thing that's like a little fucked up, but otherwise the Spanish people, the Catalonian people have been lovely. Um, toilet paper is rougher here. That's definitely true. That's true pretty much everywhere outside the US I've also been, mm, outside the Americas. Um, uh, yeah, you gotta really, it's like some tree bark shit, you know? Germany has this issue as well. But that said, my stomach has been like a lot better. My stomach is like my mental health. My stomach is not great. It's never been great, but it's noticeably improved from when I was in the U.S. So what does that say about me? What does that say about my stomach, my head, my brain? Are they all connected? What does that say about the food I'm consuming in these countries? 
I don't know. Uh, I went to Park Guel, I believe I'm saying that right, uh, designed by the arty, arty, the artist Gaudi. Um, and that place, that place is an actual trip. That, speaking of mushrooms, I don't know if he was on something when he designed it, but it is cool as hell, uh, but definitely has this like, dang, where did your brain conceive of this? You know, where did that come from? Um, and I had been there 15 years ago with my sister when we were visiting Madrid and Barcelona. Um, and that was a trip to be like, whoa, I have stepped foot here before smart, before iPhones existed, before anyone knew what the fuck a podcast was. Like, that that was a clear like break in time, right? When you couldn't just document everything on your phone. Like, the photos I have are from, I think, like a wind-up camera I was carrying around with me that you would have to get developed at a Walgreens or something like that. And, you know, it wasn't until two weeks later that you realized your eyes were closed and that beautiful picture you were hoping to get. Um, but, yeah, so that had its own, like, sentimentality to it. Uh, it's hard because I, I feel like... It's been so long since I've, like, walked around, like, super happy in the world. Like, there's always, like, a tension under it. Like, I'm at this beautiful park. It's like, oh, my God, this is awesome and amazing. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm back where I was 15 years ago. Who would have ever thought? Oh, this is lovely. Look at the lovely view. Um, and I'm having those thoughts, but also this undercurrent of sadness. of like, oh, we're all going to die. Oh, if I only knew 15 years ago what I knew now. Oh, if my life had only gone some other direction. Did I ever think it was going to be where it is now, walking around this park 15 years later, talking into a microphone uh, a few days later about the state of my mind? You know, I don't know. So it, it, life and experiences seem to get tinged with that kind of like undercurrent of sorrow. Um, so that's that's why I'm still open to looking at antidepressants and drugs and seeing because it's just not fun to walk through life like that, you know. And it's, it's not something you can, like, totally will yourself out of. Um, but I, I am... It's been a better week. I'm so fucking... I did two more shows. Uh, was much better in how I felt the next night, but the crowd was much worse. So my performance was oddly better when I was having a panic attack than when I was feeling more okay on stage. Then last night, because everyone was at the Euro final... Um, there's only 10 people in the audience, but I actually think it was one of my best performances. Um, so, you know, you, you take what you can. Um, I am returning to Berlin. I still don't have housing. I'm going back in two days on Wednesday. Uh, so I had to get an Airbnb, um, which is prohibitively expensive. So yeah, hopefully something comes through on the Vega or the apartment end. If you know of anything, hit me up at... Eric on the world podcast at gmail.com or follow me on Instagram at Eric on the world or subscribe on YouTube and then leave a comment on a video. There's many, many ways to get a hold of me. Um, but I'm going to wrap up the show. I think that's what I got. I haven't taken video to, uh, hopefully assemble like a, an actual, um, kind of Barcelona specific, um, video that is more about all that and not so much about me, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, thank you for listening, and until next time, no matter where you are in the world, be well and be loved.